Hi everyone. Uh, welcome to week four of R for HMIS admins. This is Janelle Denzen, and we are going to be talking about the tidyverse today. Um, with me, uh, the co as co-presenter, is uh, Carolyn Hoffman, who is um, training and technical assistance person at Cohio um, with me. And she is also in our ladies. Carolyn, do you want to introduce yourself a little bit? Sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Carolyn. I'm, I introduced myself last week, but for those of you who are joining, I uh, work with Janelle and she's teaching me everything she can about our <laughs> line of it. All right, cool. All right. Well, Let's get started. Um, okay. Oh, I thought I turned my camera off, but I didn't. So anyway, um, so is there any feedback on the homework? So there was quite a bit of homework. I feel like this is the most <laughs> um, homework that I gave was last week um, for week three. Um, and week three, we, we looked at GitHub and um, version control systems. So the homework was to install the Tidyverse and to get your HUD CSV export out of your HMIS and to do a tutorial. So um, was there any troubles or anything we need to know about? We can unmute you if you would rather just talk. By the way, um, we had we used both the question feature and the chat box in the last session, and so just just um, a, a little info about that. The questions are not visible uh, to other people unless we make it visible. So if it's something that's helpful to others, we might share it. But generally, um, information for everyone uh, is best shared in the chat. So things like links, I'll drop in the chat. Yes, thanks, Carolyn. Forgot to mention that. All right, so I'm going to assume everything was good. And oh, I have a question. I could not get the exercise one, question seven. Oh, okay. Well, maybe we'll cover what that was about in this um, in this workshop here or this session. Um, and if we don't cover it, then you're you can um, ask ask us, uh, put a, a question into the questions or in the chat. All right, um, so again, access to two monitors for this would be ideal. Um, Carolyn just covered the questions versus chat business. And um, this is the link where we keep everything um, for all of the, the week sessions. And uh, so you can always come here and get, you know, links to, to any of the recordings that you've missed. Um, so go back to there. Okay, yeah, okay. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, what is the Tidyverse? So the Tidyverse, I'm sure you've already done some reading on it if you've installed it by now but it's a set of our packages that are created and maintained by RStudio, the company, um, which adheres to the concept of tidy data. And I'll talk about what that is in, um, in the subsequent slides. Um, but one of the things that is really cool about the Tidyverse is it's kind of like a package of packages. So these packages each do different things, but they're sort of bundled together because they're maintained together and they're meant to work well together. And you can't say that about um, any like random two packages out there, right? They, they are not guaranteed to necessarily play nicely with each other, but everything within the tidyverse is supposed to work well with each other. Um, and it's some, another part of it is like, it's, um, meant to sort of help sort of non-coders or people who consider themselves to be non-coders to um, have an easier time, I guess. 
So tidy data is data that satisfies these rules. So um, every variable must have its own column. So in this case, you have the country, the year, the cases, and the population. So like you can see here that, that like Afghanistan actually has two rows because one row um, is uh, you know, has different years and such. So, um, so every variable has its own column, and then each observation must have its own row. And so these observations are things like Afghanistan in year 19, whatever it is, 99, had this many cases in this population. And then each value must have its own cell. So you wouldn't have like um, a value to be like, 15 divided by three, right? Like that's that's not uh, a value, that's more of a set of values. Um, so what isn't tidy data? Like what else would you have besides this? Um, so here's an example, there are a bunch of examples of non-tidy data. So I just grabbed one that I thought looked kind of cool. So here you have the same data as on the previous slide, except it's divvied up into two tables, one of cases and one of population and then you also have your the variable of the year right each year has its own column so you can see here it's not tidy because you are having to figure out like that your variables for the year are strung out across the top in the column names and then your values are all like jumbled up there with, and, you know, and so every country has its own row. Anyway, and and it's split out into two tables. So again, this is non-tidy data, and you might need the data in this way, you know, for some things, but it is not um, just, it's not considered tidy data. It doesn't mean it's bad or good, it's just not considered tidy. Um, and any questions about that? Do I need to stop for a second? Okay. Um, I think that chat, uh, just a side note, I think that chat's permissions have to be allowed by the presenter. I'm not exactly sure how to do it, but I'll look into it um, while, you're, while you keep going. Oh, okay, thanks. Okay, that makes sense. So what packages are, what packages are in the tidyverse? Um, I didn't list them all because uh, there's, I don't know, I just didn't, I have this link here and I can show you that. But these are the packages within the tidyverse that I as an HMI as admin use a lot. Um, these ones, dplyr, ggplot2, reader, and stringer are, um, they load when you, when you call library tidyverse, but Lubridate does not load when you call tidyverse. So I have to call it by, its, uh, you know, separately. And the reason that they state that Lubridate isn't uh, included when you call the tidyverse is because, so if you think about the people who use R, a lot of them are scientists and academics, and their studies don't really involve dates that much. Um, but as an HMIS admin, we use dates constantly. So um, anyway, I use these ones and Lubridate. I use other ones too, but like, at the top of every script, I'm pretty much automatically just putting these two lines of code because I these are the packages I need in general. Um, and so if you go to this link, it will list all of the different packages. So like, yeah. And I mean, I, I use some of these. It's just like, I don't, I don't know. You'd, it's good to have them all. Um, okay. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about um, the demo that we're going to do today. And so I'm assuming that everybody was able to get their HUD CSV export out of their HMIS. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to create um, an R Markdown document. Um, we're going to create a one off report using R Markdown. 
And uh, our, our objective is going to be to create a data frame that lists each organization name along with how many HMIS participating providers are associated with that organization. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to start, though, by uh, semi apologizing for last time where I had you create a project called test and then I didn't um, I didn't tell you how to get rid of it um, and so I don't know I always get annoyed when I do a demo and then I have all this data trash thrown across my computer and I don't know what to do with it so anyway I'm telling you if you have that test uh, um, project in your computer and you don't think you're going to want to use it, you can always just delete it. Just go into your R directory and find the test directory and you can just get rid of it. And now that project will be gone. Um, so anyway, just, just to let you know, but you don't, um, so you don't want to delete the practice one because that's the one we we're going to use today. Remember, um, so that, you know, that has, that should have your CSV export in it. Okay, so, um, and I actually just went ahead and put my uh, HMIS, um, I put my HUD CSV export in my R training project, and then I just told Git to ignore it um, because I didn't want to have to flip back from one project to the other. So I'm going to be in the R, my R training project, but where you need to go is if you go into R Studio and open up your practice project, um, you should have some things in there, including a data folder. And then inside your data folder should look like this, a bunch of CSVs from your HMIS. All right. So the, uh, the first thing we're going to do is um, create an R markdown file. And so we go to file, new file, sorry, and then R markdown. And it's going to throw up this, uh, this sort of prompt here, and it gives you the chance to uh, put a title. So we're going to put uh, HMIS. Oops. Participating organizations, and we're just going to leave it as HTML. If um, if folks have had trouble uh, getting the R training project onto their local computer, is is this activity something they can do just by opening up our Studio and opening um, a readme file, like a new readme? Or not read I'm sorry, a new R markdown. Um, you can create an R markdown file in any project that you have, but the reason I'm saying go to the practice one is because in the homework I had specified to add a data directory to the practice project and to save your HUD CSV export data, the CSV files, to that directory. So okay. since we're going to use that data in our achieving our objective uh, i want to start we want to be sure that we're starting in the project where your data is okay Does that make sense? yeah i just um i'm sure some folks might it's it's a little bit of a difficult process to get that um practice uh pro like to get the repo from GitHub onto their local computer so if anyone's struggling with that maybe just put a question in the questions box and we'll keep moving yeah, so the practice project wouldn't have come from a repo. It was a pro it's a project that we built, I think, in week two. Oh, that's um, amazing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so if you weren't on the week two um, session, then, uh, well, I mean, then where would they have saved their data folder to? I don't know. I guess if you're having any troubles with this, just let us know and we can help you create the a project and um, get your data, tree, you know, your folder tree set up. 
But you want to create the uh, the um, the markdown document in the same project where you saved your HUD CSV export. Okay, so that's what I'm doing, and that's why I'm creating this in my R training uh, project instead of a practice project uh, because that's where my data is. Just because I didn't want to flip flop. So. Uh, you can see I if you've created it already, um, you see that based on what you typed in the title before, it puts your title here, and then it already knows your name, and it guessed that you want the date to to reflect today's date. And since we left it selected as HTML, the output is HTML document. You can change this after the fact, like you, if we wanted to change it to Word there's a specific um, like thing we could change this to, and the document would then knit to Word instead of to HTML. But we're just gonna leave this. And so we're just gonna do a slight tour of what this R Markdown document is. Um, let's see, yes, sir. Okay. And I'm gonna um, increase my font size for you all too. Is it? It's not doing it. Is it? Is it not knitting? No, I can't get the font size to increase. Oh, you're saying <laughs> maybe because it's oh there we go okay I don't know what was going on but it seems to work now so um this is a lot of big words okay should work though um okay so anyway we're gonna take a tour of the R markdown document you notice that it's you know when you create a script it's like a blank uh thing where you just you can do anything you want um and R markdown they start you out with some code chunks so they start you out with this this header business up here they um they have like a sort of template thing going on here that shows you like what how it all works um we're not going to go super deep into that today because we're going to just sort of try, try to concentrate on the tidyverse um but we're just going to hit a couple of things that are just real important um so this is a code chunk and you can, you know, collapse them. Um, they have settings that you can control um, through this sort of GUI. If you want to show um, the code and the output, which is how it defaults to, um, you would just leave it alone. But in general, for our purposes as HMIS admins, we don't want that because I don't know about you, but like my um, coworkers in general, except for Carolyn, don't want to see the code. Um, they just want to see the output. So like I would um, show echo equal false. So it'll just set all the chunks to echo to the default to echo, echo equal false. And that way, the way that the default code chunk is going to work is it will just, whatever is going on in here, um, it'll just show, the final document will just show the output of the code here. Um, and then you'll also notice some differences up here along this um, this row of buttons. Um, instead of having like, uh, well, you can see run, but like if you uh, remember on a scripts, it has like a source and like um, some other things. Um, and this has a knit button and no source and an insert button. Um, so you can like, add a code chunk of of any of these languages actually um but i wouldn't do it inside of an r code chunk but anyway so um that's what those do um so i just to sort of show you what's going on here i think it would be easiest just to click the knit button so that we can just look at the output ah oh, dang we have to save it first i apologize um i'm just gonna type this 
a good time to bring it up. We had a question in the question box about where to save this um, R Markdown uh, document or file. Yeah. And yeah. The, do you want to talk about that? I don't need to. I don't need to read along. Yeah. So I I just saved it. To, so if you don't tell it, like it's going to default you to saving it directly to your project root. So I, when I just click save on mine without telling it to change anything, it assumed that I wanted to keep it directly in my R training uh, project directory. So that's what it did. And that's where I would recommend you, you do it. Um, so. Oh, also, yeah. PSVs uh, that you'll need for this document uh, should be saved in the data folder, as you, I think, probably pointed out before. But that's that's kind of where folks look for that um, that information when they're looking at your code. It's kind of like I don't know how yeah. it's the expected yeah. that, I guess. Right. Okay. So well. So this. So I I knitted it. And then it showed up over here in the viewer pane. And so you can see that it added the title here from here. It added the author right there. And this is an HTML document, basically. And I, you can also, if you click this um, show a new window button, it will open it in a browser of your choice. And you can see it's just, it's just displaying this this test.html that it created when you click knit and so um you can either look at it here or you can look at it at it in the viewer pane it doesn't really matter it's the same document so then if after the date you can see that this code chunk is not represented over here and it just shows this header of our markdown and then like some text and a link and um, some some bolding there, and then um, this cars the showing this summary of the the data set called cars, um, and then another header, and then like a plot, and then all this right. So it's just explaining sort of it's just meant to be like a um, an intro to how our markdown works. Um, but we're not going to need all of this for what we're doing. So I, what I always do is I will start like from right here and just select everything all the way to the end and just delete it because we're going to be creating our own stuff and our own code chunks. Um, and we'll, we'll be adding to this one too. So just delete everything. Past. I like having this little header there. I can just change out what I want to say. Um, so I'll just actually, I'm just going to go ahead and make this the header. Of, I'm just going to say HMIS participating. And then I'm going to go into this, fir this first code chunk. And I'm not going to change anything here because this, this line of code here, um, I think, like I indicated before, sets all subsequent code chunks to act in the same way and i want i want all the code chunks to default to echo echo equals false um, because i don't want the code to show unless i tell it to um, just because of the nature of my work so then i'm going to do i'm going to add the libraries that i was saying you know we were talking about before um, library tidyverse and then library um, liberate as just like what we need to work with. So uh, if we remember correctly, our um, I'm going to go go ahead and have this like to stop viewing. Um, anyway, our objective, remember, was to we want a data set that shows organization name and then how many projects, uh, how many HMI participating projects are associated to that particular organization. So um, 
out of all the CSV files that we downloaded from our HMISs with, in, with the uh, CSV export, does, um, y'all can put in the, in the questions, um, what do you all think, which CSVs do you think we would need? to do this. I see someone says organization.csv and project CSV. That's right. You got it. Um, so yeah, so we need both of those and they're both inside this data folder. So what I tend to do um, when I'm pulling in the, well, I read a thing that was like, what you should be doing when you're pulling in raw data is name your um, objects that you're pulling it into, like raw underscore whatever it is. And um, in, my, in my greatest times, I am actually doing that, but a lot of times I don't do that. But anyway, I'm going to, I'm gonna be on my best behavior today because I'm on a webinar in front of a bunch of people. And so I'm gonna do raw underscore project. And then if you do read underscore, so, okay. So there's read.csv and that is coming from like base R and the utils package, but there's read underscore ID, I mean uh, CSV that I tend to use but it didn't recognize, it didn't suggest that because I haven't yet loaded the tidyverse or looper date. So what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna go ahead and load the, the two libraries that I want by doing control enter on them. Um, so I'm gonna do control enter and then control enter again, oh, control enter again, yep. Yeah, and it's tried to run this, but it doesn't, obviously it's not complete. Um, so the, the way you, you would run like individual lines of code inside of a code chunk is you use control enter. But if you wanted to run the entire code chunk together, which we don't because I have this here that doesn't make sense yet, um, you would use this sort of this run button there. So anyway, now that I've, loaded the tidyverse package and the lubridate package i can do read underscore csv and it sees it's using the reader package you can see there and then i'm just going to click um, enter and have it auto fill for me and then so you can see in the hover carolyn can you see the the hover like can you see the hover on this yes you can okay thanks so you can see on the hover, it's it gives you, without even having to consult the help page, it gives you what it's expecting. And so anything inside of these parentheses, um, if there's anything that has, that doesn't have like an equals and then something else, you need to specify what that argument is. So you can see the first argument is called file. So it's asking for the file. So what is it, what is the CSV that you want to read, right? And so I'm gonna go ahead and type, um, put it in quotes. And if you type data and then uh, forward slash, and then if you click tab, you can pick from all of the files in there and you can like, yeah, and just go ahead and have it autofill for you. That way you're not mistyping anything. Um, and then if I wanted to um, if I wanted to change the default of any of these other arguments, I could do that here and I could do like a comma and then put like column names equal and then like put what I want the column names to be or however I wanted to manage that, I could do that. Um, but as um, I don't care very much, I am just gonna leave all of those arguments the way they are. And if it has an argument name like call names or call types and then equals something, that means you don't need to name it. You don't need to call that argument. You can just let it do its default thing. And that's what I'm gonna do. 
So then we're going to do the same thing with uh, organization. All right. So then if we run this entire chunk, we have sort of set where we have something to start with, right? And then you can see in the environment here um, that your raw organization and raw project have now loaded and as they are, they exist as data objects in R right now. Um, what did we miss? Okay. All right. I don't know the answer to the if you don't have the hover. I'll have to look into that later. Um, so then, okay, so yeah, let's talk strategy a little bit. So we want to take one thing at a time. Our our objective is, like I said, to say to have like the organization names and how many projects who are HMIs participating are associated to that organization. So if we look at the, um, the, the data that we have, so if we open up raw project, we can see all of the, the column names here, um, project ID, organization ID, project name, all of this stuff, right? And so what's, what isn't here, is the organization name. We have an organization ID, but we don't have the organization name. So we're gonna need to get that from the organization file because that has those there. So this column needs to be able to, like needs to be represented here somehow. And we're gonna have to figure out how to do that. So that's one problem. The second problem is that in the in raw projects, um, if we look at it, so if you want to, if you actually click on your raw project, and I can show the data here because it's just project data, um, you can see that there are non participating projects here in the mix. So that's a, another problem is that we have um, some, you know, non continuum projects, some, yeah, non participating projects. So that's another problem. And then the last problem that we have is that we need to smush the rows down to the organization level to get a project count. So like if we look at in the project um, file, you can see like there's a bunch of rows here that have the same organization ID. So we need to like figure out how to get all of those smushed into one row and so that we know how many participating projects are in that particular row. So there are a lot of ways to crack this egg. Um, so instead of like going through all the different ways that we could do it, I decided to just um, blaze a path for us and we could just go and do it. So what we're gonna do first is solve the second problem that I named first, because it seems the most straightforward. So, and that is the one where we have non-participating projects in the project file. So, um, so I'm going to be in that, okay, when you create a code chunk, here I'm going to create a code chunk right here. When you create a code chunk, it just, um, it just puts the three back ticks in the front, the three back ticks at the end, and then um, states the language. But you can also name the code chunk. So where it's, you have the R and then the space setup. So the name of that chunk is setup. So it's chunk one setup. Um, so chunk two hasn't been named. So the way I would do that is um, put a space and then, um, and then we name the chunk. And naming is always so hard for me. What should I name it, Carolyn? Gosh, uh, eliminate non-participating. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, I'm just gonna write participating. Okay. You're all gonna write this. <laughs> I know. Oh my gosh. Okay. 
So we named the code chunk and then, you know, we can always rename it if we need to or whatever. So, um, so we need, what we need to do is create a, um, a data object called HMIS participating, where we're going to filter out all of the non-participating ones and leave behind all the ones that are. So we're going to do HMIS participating. Oh, hey, Janelle, we have a question about inserting a new code chunk. Can you demo that one more time? Yes. I'm going to insert one right here at line 28. Um, so you, you can do it a number of ways. You can do three back ticks yourself, and then curly braces, and then R, and then enter, and then three more back ticks. And now you've manually created your own code chunk, right? And it, it looks exactly like this one. It's just that you created it manually. Or you can go to insert and then click what language it is that you want to write in here, and uh, it'll create it for you. And I think there's a, a keyboard combination, but I always forget what it is and I never use it. So feel free to be fancy if you want. But those are the two different ways to do it. And I know there is a third. All right. Okay, so for HMIS participating, um, we're going to, we basically, we want to filter raw project uh, where the HMIS participating equals one. Um, this HMIS participating project, it needs to be one. And the way I know that one means yes and zero means no beyond just common sense is the, um, the, HM, uh, the HUD specifications for the HUD CSV export will tell you that. Like, you can go there and like look that up and it'll tell you that. Um, so are there any questions at this point? Um, there okay. aren't. Okay. I'm using Myr Studio to hover, to get the hover thing um, to work either. If you could demo that, like when you get the chance, um, it okay. might help me demo what's going on. All right. Um, okay, so we're going to talk about piping um, because there's a number, there's a couple of ways that you could filter use, um, using R. You can filter the um, raw project data object. So um, I'm just going to come over to to here and show you in the R for Data Science book, they talk about piping. We're not gonna like study this or something um, for a super long time, but just to show you just a, a basic um, example of why piping is preferable to like, um, to not piping <laughs> is like often you'll have like the noun of a thing. Like, so this is, so, the, you know, the little bunny foo, foo thing, like that poem from childhood or whatever, um, they, it like lists a, a, a string of things that foo, foo does. And, um, and yeah, and then so to, to uh, sort of do this in code, you can see here that like the, the noun, the sort of subject of the sentence is right smack in the middle of the code. And then, the first thing that happens to Fufu is he hops. And then, you know, an argument of that particular, <laughs> that particular function is through. And then anyway, they, they kind of made this um, cute and silly. But, and then the next thing that Fufu does is scoop. And then the next thing that Fufu does is bop. Um, but to see that like in order, in like an order that you can perceive, you have to read from the middle to the outside. And it just, it's very hard to read, I find. And so um, piping answers that um, in that it puts your sort of subject of where you're starting. And then every time you see a pipe, you can say, and then there was a hop and it was through the forest. And then there was a scoop 
and it was field mice. And then there was a bop uh, on the head, right? So like you can see um, sort of the order of things and who it happened to, and that's how um, piping works. So, and this is considered a pipe. Um, it's a percent and a greater than and a percent. And so basically every time I see this, I really, I just think in my head, and then. Um, and then, cause then you just like do another thing to it and then you do another thing to it. Um, so anyway, so the way we're going to filter is, um, we're going to first, the, what we're starting with is raw project. And then we're going to filter that so that HMIS participating project equals one. And the reason I did the equals equals is because you're talking about equality. So I could run this whole chunk. Oh, let me just roll this, run, uh, run this whole chunk. And you can see it created this HMIS participating. And you can tell it worked because the project.csv had uh, 1160 observations and now it only has 620. So now we have all the projects that are HMIs participating, if the data is right, um, and into one data object. Are there any questions that I need to answer? Uh, no, it looks like we're going okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, okay, so we have all the HMIS participating, and now we can use this at any time. Like, if we needed to use this way down the script or whatever, we could come back here and get this um, this data frame later and use it for other things. All right, so that now we've solved. So we've solved the second problem, and so I, the next thing we're going to do is solve the first problem, um, which means we're going to have to talk about joins. And um, because we need to get that organization name into our data frame. So I have a thing to show you about data frames. I mean, about joins. Good visualization of the joins. Okay. So these are really uh really cool the way they have showing showing these so okay we're going to be talking about a um, table called x and a table called y and you can't see that in the actual um depiction of these tables but you can tell from the the thing that they use to create these tables is that this column with the colors in it is named ID, and this column is named X, and this column is named Y. Um, so you can see those here. So you see you have two different tables. They don't have the same rows in them, uh, and they don't have the same columns, obviously. Um, we have a question about assigning uh, variables the, a single using a single um, equal sign. Yeah. Uh, it just says single equal sign is for assignment question mark. So it you you uh, you can use a single equal sign for assignment, but um, I think the, what we covered in week one and two was that it's best to use the assignment arrow like we have been um which is this so and you can you can create this assignment arrow um by doing alt dash in our studio or you can just type the the less than and the, the dash okay so should i start over with this tables okay uh, are we good for joins can we go to go ahead to joins i you think i'm <laughs> i'm good okay <laughs> all right so uh the 
Yes. I said I don't see any other questions about it, so we'll keep. Okay. So the first uh, join that they're they're showing us here is the inner join, where we're taking tables x and y, and we're only winding up with the rows that are common between the two tables, and um, we're pulling. We're, we're winding up with both the column, the X column and the Y column for those rows. Um, and then for a left join, you so this is the one, I feel like the left join is used so often that it's uh, it almost should be first, but the inner join is important as well. But so your left join is usually, so if you're, if you've got, one table that you've kind of been shaping into a, a thing like that you you like the rows that are in it kind of like we have been like we already we like the rows that are in uh age mice participating because we've already um we've already filtered out all of the um non-participating providers right um so when you are using that kind of um dynamic you can you would use a left join because you're sort of keeping the integrity of the rows that are in the the x table right um and i i would i would say we're putting that on the left because we read left to right we sort of think left to right and so like you're sort of starting with this uh this one on the left um and then we're going to the y table to grab more data to add on to the rows that are already in x Right, and so you can see how these um, meld into each other, and we lose any extra rows that are in the Y table because we are um, just basically adding in a column of data from the Y table into what's on the left. Um, and then, so this shows what happens when you're doing an, a left join, but in the Y table, you actually have multiple rows that match up with something that's in the in the X table. And it shows you here how this can kind of balloon out your table, um, which is a good reason to sort of look at, as you're doing things, to look at how many observations you have, you know, you have in a, in a data object um, as you're going forward to make sure that these are what you're expecting. Um, so this is just something to look out for if you're left joining things that you're going to have, if you have duplicates in the Y table, those are going to come over. Um, and then the right join is the same exact thing. It's just the other way around. Um, you like your your right, your you know, the, the table on the right more um, is in terms of rows. And then a full join, and I use this sometimes too, um, is where like we want all of the rows in both tables and um, you know if there's not data in one or the other table for that particular row then just leave it in null um, and then there's filtering joins which I super highly recommend getting your your head around um, because I use these all the time too um, but you um, these would uh, we're not going to cover these <laughs> but you can always come back here um any time to remind yourself like how these work and of course um if you do go to the help and and look up um left join it also shows you um how they all work too uh, da, 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 da. yeah it like it explains how it all works so anyway that's all all right goes all right, how are we doing, Carolyn? Uh, looks like we're doing okay. Um, All right. I did check, check about the chat feature and Goats Webinars website just says that like they can't, which I'm not sure how we do it in our weekly meetings okay. at work. We don't all have logins, but um, so I guess question is still the best option for now. Um, and you okay. can yeah, allegedly can chat individually amongst participants, but not as a group. All right. All right. So we're going to then uh, create 
uh, sort of, I, this is going to be like our final um, data object. Uh, and it's going to, we're going to first solve, uh, you know, the problem number one, which was we want, we need to get that organization name over. So I'm just going to call this org size. And we're going to start with um, H minus participating. And then we're going to left join the organization. Wait. It wouldn't be organization ID because that is not a, an object. It's a variable. I don't know why it offered me that. But um, so be sure that you, you type left join and then organization. Oh, no, 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 no. It'll be raw organization. What am I doing? Okay, that's why. <laughs> that's why it wasn't making sense. Okay. Um, okay, so we've we've stated that we want to left join uh, raw organization to H minus participating, um, and we need to tell it what um, what variable it should join on. Like, what is the common uh, you know the ID field? in both tables and that is definitely organization id um because that that is in both of them so we're going to do by equal and then in quotes you'll put organization id and so let's run this chunk and we'll see that as expected the org size has 620 observations so it has every um row that's in h minus participating is represented here um and no more right so like it didn't add anything extra so and you can see that there's 19 variables in the h minus participating because that's how many are in the project um uh, data object and then it added a bunch because it pulled all of those columns from organization into this table so you can see all of them here and it and it like um added some some kind of trash in there but it's not going to matter because we don't need all of those those columns anyway so now we're going to uh we're going to talk about the third problem is which is how to smush the data down to just the organization id because we don't need all of the um all the providers in there the granularity of this is project level right because it lists every project id but we want it to group by the organization so we're going to do another pipe and add a group by and we're going to do organization ID. No, 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 no. Organization name. So if we were to just do the group by, it wouldn't look any different. It would just be like sorted by group, um, by uh, organization name. So if we wanted to smush those rows, we're going to have to tell it to summarize somehow. So what we're going to do is is put a summarize function, and we're going to call the the column that this summarizing is going to create. We're going to call it um, projects, and then equal, um, and then um, as a for count, you just do n and then an empty set of parens. And so we're going, so now currently org size, because we ran it when we were just, we just ran it when it was this, it was a little baby. But now we added this grouping and summarizing. So we're gonna run it again, and it's gonna overwrite org size with the new um, data set. So we're gonna go ahead and rerun that chunk. And you can see it has far fewer observations and only two columns. Um, and so we're going to look at that and organization or org size now looks like this. 
So let's say then I like this, this is great, but I don't wanna see the organizations alphabetized. I'd rather see the, um, the projects. I wanna see like, what is the biggest organization? So I could, I could continue to pipe and just keep piping and do another pipe and do a range. And then if I want it descending, I'd have to do this and then projects. And we run it again. And of course, nothing here changes because all we did is arrange the rows differently. And now you can see it um, sorted the organizations by how many HMIS participating projects are associated to that organization. Um, so yeah, and you, you know, you, you can keep in, you can keep going. You can create um, like a visualization out of this later. You know, in the in the um, in the document. So like, if we want this to uh, to show, if we were to like knit this, let's do like we just want to see the top seven. Let's say head. Um, actually defaults to the top seven, which is why I said top seven. So if we did knit, it would show us, oh, maybe it's down here. Yeah, so one thing about our markdown is that it really uh, pays off to um, have some other package in here, like I use GT, there's also cable, K-A-B-L-E, as a nice, as a way of uh, displaying tables nicely, because this certainly doesn't display nicely, like at all. Um, but anyway, here is the output of our code anyway. So um, that is the, that is the uh, R Markdown file that we created. So in that, that ends the demo, and it's a good thing there's only three minutes left. Ah. Um, so let me see what else I had. Are there any questions at this point? Um, the only one that is unanswered was about um, how you had hovering like tool tips in yeah. your video. You know, I looked it up okay. and it's, it's something called completion and you set it up uh, as, you're, as you're setting up your um, project, I think. Anyway, I'll put yeah. a link about getting those. I'm curious because I don't have it online, so it's actually helpful to look up. Um, again, it's right. called completion, and you just check a box that says uh, show help tooltip after function completions. Okay, cool. Thanks, Carolyn. All right, so then the homework for next time for week five is nothing specific. And I would just suggest that like, if you're gonna go into Excel to do something silly or, you know, simple, not silly, but you know, like just simple like that, what we just did, um, just like cordon off the time, you know, the extra time is gonna take you to do it in R instead of Excel and, you know, do that. And so just play with your, your HMIS data, um, and then next week, I'm going to leave some time for folks to share something that they have done in, in R. Um, and that can be something that you started on way before the series started. Um, it can be something that you just like, look, I didn't go into Excel. Yay for me. Right. So um, it's any, any level of things that you've, you've done. Um, we like to. Uh, we want to kind of share stuff with each other. We are, there's also going to be content. So like the whole, it's not going to be the whole week. I mean, the whole uh, session that's just going to be sharing. There's also going to be content um, that some like last minute things, um, a way of sort of turning you loose uh, into the world of R and, um, and how to sort of go forward with things. Um, so I think, I think that's it. Uh, yeah, so next next topic is turning you loose. So is there anything else? All right.
Well, I think I think that's that's it then. I appreciate everybody's um, participation. It was it was a good one. See you next week.